To achieve a properly grounded system, you must first install an 8-foot copper ground rod near the base of your solar panel mounting structure. You can purchase the ground rod at your local building supply store. As you might guess, you need to get this ground rod 8 feet into the ground. To accomplish this, you can use the brute force method. Now, what is the brute force method? Well, get a stake pounder and pound away. Or, you can make a water drill, like this one. I'll let you figure this one out, but basically, a water drill is just some heavy-duty pipe put together in the shape of a T. The handle has one end capped off, the other end has a hose adapter, you can have a valve if you'd like, and make sure the other end is at least six or seven feet, and then drill some teeth into the end to help dig through the dirt. To get started, I choose my location near the base of my solar panel mounting structure. Then I turn on the water and start drilling. We are almost there, another few feet. Okay, now that we've gone as far as we can with the water drill, we'll let the mud dry and then install the ground rod first thing in the morning. Now that we've got a pretty deep hole using the water drill, let's insert the ground rod and finish pounding it in. Once you have about a foot or a foot and a half left of ground rod sticking up, you'll need to use a sledgehammer to pound it the rest of the way in. And you may even want to use a 2 by 4 with a hole drilled through it to keep the rod stabilized. Once we've gotten the rod just below ground level, we're done. And there you have it, a ground rod inserted eight feet into the ground. Step one of grounding our system is now complete. Here is what we need to do for step two. We've already installed the ground rod. Now we need to connect the ground mounting hole on solar panel 1 with the ground mounting hole on solar panel 2. Then we connect from that point to the ground bus bar in the combiner box. Finally, we will connect the ground bus bar to the ground rod. Here is what we need for step 2. About 20 feet of 6 gauge solid core copper ground wire, two terminal lugs that will fit the 6 gauge copper ground wire. Then we have two quarter inch diameter by two and a half inch long galvanized bolts, nuts, washers, and lock washers. And then we have one direct burial ground rod lug. All of these things you can find at your local building supply store. Now let's identify the holes that we drilled into the frame that align with the ground mounting holes on the solar panel. Here's the first hole, and here is the second hole. These holes line up directly with the ground mounting holes that are on the solar panels. Starting from the first hole, we're going to measure the distance to the second hole, and then we're going to cut a piece of our ground wire. We've measured the correct length between the two holes, grab our wire cutters, we'll go ahead and cut 
Now I'm going to take one of the two terminal ground lugs and I'm going to loosen the screw on top and I'm going to insert it over the top of the piece of six gauge copper ground wire that we just cut. Then I'm going to tighten the screw down as tight as it will go and then I'm going to secure it to the first hole on the top of our mounting frame. Before I secure the first terminal lug to the first ground mounting hole on the first solar panel, I'm going to make sure that piece of ground wire that we just cut extends all the way to the second ground mounting hole on the second solar panel. Now let's go ahead and mount the first terminal lug. Let's make sure the terminal lug mounting hole lines up with the mounting hole that we drilled through the wood frame. Now let's insert the bolt and washer on the bottom of the frame. Make sure the bolt goes through the wood frame all the way up through the ground mounting hole in the solar panel into the mounting hole on the lug. Then we're going to put the lock washer and nut on top the bolt, get a wrench on the top, and another wrench on the bottom. Let's go ahead and secure the terminal lug by tightening down the bolt. Make sure everything is nice and snug. Okay, now let's measure the distance between the second ground mounting hole and the ground bus bar that's in the combiner box. And let's cut a piece of our six gauge ground wire that is equal to that length. Before you cut the second piece of ground wire, run it all the way to the combiner box and get an idea of the route you want to go with it. Basically we're going to cut a couple holes in the side of the combiner box and then we're going to feed the ground wire through one of the holes into the combiner box and secure them to the ground bus bar. Once you've determined the length of ground wire you need, go ahead and cut it to that length. Now let's grab our second terminal lug, loosen the screw. Now let's go to the second ground mounting hole on the second solar panel. Let's grab the two free ends of the six gauge ground wire and let's insert them both into the terminal ground lug. And then let's tighten down the screw as tight as it will go. Okay, now it's ready to mount to the second ground mounting hole. To mount the grounding wire and the second terminal lug, we're going to do the same thing as last time. Line up the terminal lug mounting hole with the mounting hole through the solar panel frame, insert the bolt and washer, then we'll get our lock washer and nut, put those over the top of the bolt, and then tighten everything down with your wrench. And our second terminal lug is now secured to the second solar panel and the second piece of ground wire is ready to be mounted inside the combiner box to the ground bus bar. Now let's drill two holes right here in the combiner box and then we'll feed the six gauge ground wire through one of the holes and up into the ground bus bar. Hole number one Okay, there's hole number one. Now let's go ahead and drill hole number two about a half inch away from the first hole. Okay, hole one and two are now complete. Now let's feed through the piece of ground wire that's coming from the second mounting hole on the second solar panel. Now let's loosen one of the screws on the ground bus bar so we can feed the ground wire into that hole. 
And then let's make a loop on this end so we can fit the ground wire into the hole on the ground bus bar. You may need to use your pliers or wire cutters just to grab the end and twist, twist it into a loop. And then just keep playing with it until you get it into the hole. And then tighten down the screw as tight as it will go on the ground bus bar. Make sure the ground wire is nice and secure. Using the last piece of six gauge ground wire, we're gonna connect one end to the second hole in the combiner box and into the ground bus bar. And then the other end we're gonna run down to the ground rod. We have our last piece of ground wire and we're running it into the second hole of the combiner box. And then we're going to loosen the screw on the ground bus bar. Again, using our pliers, let's bend a loop in the end of the ground wire. And again, keep playing with it until you get it secure in the hole. And then tighten down the screw on the bus bar until it's in nice and tight. And then remember to caulk the two holes so that we have a nice watertight seal. Now I'm running the ground wire from the combiner box down to our ground rod. And then we'll go ahead and cut off the excess Then we're going to grab our pliers and we're going to bend the end into an L. Then we're going to grab our direct burial ground rod lug, slip it over the top of the ground rod. Then we're going to feed this end of the six gauge ground wire into the lug. We're going to tighten down the bolt. Make sure it's nice and snug. Okay, now we're ready to fill in the hole. Now our system is successfully grounded. Panel one and two, the combiner box is grounded to the ground rod. Now before we move on to the next step, let's go ahead and close up our combiner box. Now let's grab the front panel for the combiner box and we're gonna cut these last two panels out of it so it'll fit over the GFP and the circuit breakers. We'll do this using our utility knife and just keep playing with it till those little insert panels come out. Then let's pop the panel insert out and I'm going to take my utility knife and just shave a little bit more off the bottom of this edge here. We are carving out this edge just a little bit more so we can fit the cover over the GFP device. To install the front panel on the combiner box, first slide in the bottom tabs and then the top tabs. You may need a flathead screwdriver to help you as well. With the front cover in place, we can now close the lid on the combiner box and replace the lid screw. Okay, on to the next step.